What's up guys? So we're doing another one of the junior pen testing file inclusion box, okay? So this one is kind of ramps up the uh, the difficulty a little bit for you, but it's good information. I think it's something you need to cover. If you still don't understand it after this video, uh, you can join my Discord and we can try and you know go a little deeper. But I'm gonna try and keep this video a little short, but it is complex, so hopefully we can get through it without making it too difficult for you guys um, to understand what I'm trying to, trying to talk about. So what is file inclusion first? So what it is is when you've seen it on URL, this is an example and it's kind of explaining what a URL looks like to you guys. So obviously the protocol, then you have your domain name, then you have your file name. So what that is is that's the actual call for the file, the get request. And then here it's the parameter is what is that file? And then obviously user cv.pdf is the file. So what we're looking for here with these file inclusion, or there's remote file inclusion and there's local file inclusion, but what we're looking for is can we change this file to something that we want? Can we make it read what we want rather than what it's actually supposed to? And this is again, um, if you're a security admin or something like that, you can stop this simply with input validation. So if you can actually validate that this is actually the file that you're wanting rather than what they're putting in. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. You guys can read this if you want on the website. That's totally fine. But I'm just kind of explaining to you guys what it is. Um, and it says here, why do file inclusions happen? Uh, and this is pretty self-explanatory. So the reason they're they happen is because poorly written um, or if the coder doesn't know security pra best practices, that type of thing. So that's really the big thing. Um, and then it says here, what is the risk of file inclusion? Well, again, that all depends on what's available for it to find, right? Um, so if the, like it says here, if the attacker can somehow write to the server, such as an attempt directory, um, it's possible to gain remote code execution, which we'll cover in this. So it's actually as dangerous as you make it in a sense. So if if the only thing that they can have access to is, you know, some silly file, then that's not that dangerous. But if they can remote code execute on your server, that's pretty bad. So uh, the start machine, I think it's already started. Hopefully it's started. Um, anyway, so it's saying, please go to this link, which should look as follows. And that's where we're at here. So let me refresh this to make sure it's started. Okay, it looks like we're good. Um, so then it says once you deploy, just sit, hit next. So we did that. All right, so path traversal. So what is this? It's basically traversing their directories from the URL. And I'll kind of explain to you what that is here. I'll show you. So you can see here, this is what they're talking about. So here's your URL, HTTP web app.thm, get PHP is the request, and then that little question mark you see there that's actually where the it's going to start reading the string and it's going to read it as a string keep that in mind so then it says file equals and they just put uh go up a directory go up a directory go up a directory go up to direc a directory etsy password so for those of you that don't know that password file in a linux machine actually hosts or has all the lists of users typically it doesn't have their passwords in it like it used to Sorry guys, I'm, my throat's really dry. But it doesn't have the password file, or the passwords like it used to. The shadow file actually has those. So if you're looking for that, you could also view the shadow file, but you may need permissions to do that. So here we go. So it's telling us that we can actually access it by doing that, by telling it when you go to that file, run this string of commands instead. And this is a real thing that happens quite a bit, and I've seen this in real code. So keep that in mind that it is this is more of a real situation that can happen it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than that but it's possible alright so this is just talking about it more and t showing you some of the directories that are very common for people to get into and kind of explain what they are that's more of a Linux thing you guys can um, I don't think they have any windows Oh, they got C boot um, anyway so this that's stuff you guys can research on your own if you're curious but that doesn't really pertain to the box necessarily um, because we are only going to be looking for the flags, not for these files. So it says, what function causes path traversal vulnerabilities in PHP? And it's file underscore get contents. So that's the actual um, function that it's calling upon to do that, to actually find those files for you. All right. 
So now we have local file inclusion. So what's local file inclusion as opposed to remote? So what it is is pretty simple. Local means you're trying to call on a file in that's on that server. Remote, and we'll cover it a little bit more, is when you're trying to reach out to another server to pull a file down, basically. So, and you can see here, it says this is basically an example of one. So it says here, suppose the web application provides two languages and the user selects between English and Arabic. Excuse me. Um, so then you can see here, here's the PHP code itself. It's include is the function that they're talking about, the get request and then language. So the PHP code uses a get request via the URL parameter lang. So to include the file of the page, the call can be done by sending the following HTTP request as follows. So as you see here, when they're calling upon that language and it's english.php is what they're talking about. And then the other would be or arabic.php. Well, what would happen if you change those? If you said the language equals something else, that's what they're talking about. Um, so now in this case, it works because there isn't a directory specified in the include function and no input validation. So you can see here what they did is they took that get.php and they actually said file equals Etsy password. And it worked because like they said here, there's no validation. There's nothing to show that that's what, you know, that is what they need. It's just going to allow you to do it because it's a computer. It reads what you tell it to. And if you didn't code it correctly, it's going to read it for you. So that's important to know guys. All right. So you can see here, they're talking about it again in this code. The developer decides to use the include function to call PHP pages in the language directory via the language parameter. Okay, so if there's no input validation, the attacker can manipulate the URL, which we've seen, and right here you see it again. So when they go to select the language, they're actually saying, Show me your Etsy password file. Again, pretty standard, you know, you guys understand um, what, what's going on here, and what it is is you're allowed to run commands basically onto the server because it doesn't validate that you are literally only selecting a PHP file. And if it does, we're going to show you how to kind of get around that too. So give lab one a try and read the Etsy password. So we'll go to lab one. And at first this threw me off when I first did this box because I didn't understand why it's giving me a um, file name to include because I thought we were going to do it URL. So we're going to do both. So the first one, we're just gonna say, you know what, show me the file name, show me the Etsy password file. Boom, and you can see it. Now, I know what you're saying, you're, you're, or what you're thinking, you're thinking, well, a website's not gonna ask you to tell it what file you wanna see on their, their server, right? They're not, you're right. But what we can do is we can use this format up here, and this is just URL encoded, so it's not fancy, it's nothing crazy, and we can say, instead of file equals Etsy password, Let's see if we can see Etsy shadow. And I don't know if we have permissions to do this or not. And we don't. So permission denied right there, but that's all right. So now let's just do the Etsy password file from the browser. Boom. And there it is. And you see it's not URL encoded now. So when you put it here, it just URL encodes it and still sends it, but it still works. So there's our first Etsy password. And then it says here, what would the request look like? And it's that exact up here lab one php file etsy password perfect okay so now it says in lab two which we got to go back in lab two what is the directory specified in the include function so what that means is first let's just send it a test so we what they're trying to do is get you to look at the the errors you get and gather information off of it and you can see right here it says function is dot include so the function is includes and it tell it shows you right here includes test. So that's the function that it's calling upon that's in the in the programming that actually is being utilized. So you can use that to your advantage with the error messages if you know what functions it's trying to use, if you know vulnerabilities in those functions. All right. So that's that's an easy box so far, right? All right. So now what it's going to what it's talking about here and I'm just trying to shorten this up for you guys because this is a really long one. Um, and I want you guys to do this one yourself because me explaining it's not going to help you, but if you get stuck on something and you watch this, you can progress through it. Um, this is just co more complicated than some of the other stuff, so you're not going to just um, watch it and know it right away. 
All right. So what it's doing here is it's telling us how to figure out what if they do have it set to where they only find PHP files, then how do we get around that? And that's what it's showing you. So one thing you can do, and it's showing you here, is use the errors and actually look for certain things. And so what it's saying here, as you can see, the error message discloses another important piece of information, and it expo exposes what path you actually are in at the time, so you know how many paths to go back. I'll just tell you guys on this lab, it seems like four is always the right number to go back or up, however you want to say it. Um, and it says here we use four because we know the path has four levels, which we get. But it says here, they still got an error. Okay, so why did they get the error? Well, you can see here, it looks like they got out. Let's see, where does it say that? Okay, so it looks like it seems they can move out of the PHP directory, but it, it's adding .php onto the end of their file. that they're So when they're specifying the Etsy password file, it's actually looking for Etsy password.php. Now, and you can see that right there. Now, the reason it's doing that is to validate that you can only use PHP files. Now, here's a little neat trick that you can do to, to negate that. You can put this percent zero zero or zero x zero zero at the end of it. And what that's gonna do is it's actually going to tell, I uh, thought I clicked off, sorry. It's actually going to tell the code to stop because that's basically uh, a terminate command. So what it's what you're trying to do is stop it before it adds that PHP on. And this does work. Um, I'll tell you it's not gonna work all the time, but it does work. And then there's another little trick here that I'm trying to find that they show you. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. You can add a period at the end of it. I can't find it, but you can add a period at the end of it and it's similar. Okay, so it's gonna do the same type of thing. And you guys can read through this. Oh, here you go. And what it does is, so the exploit would be similar to adding the period. We could also use that. So what you're doing is adding a period. It's just going to basically do the same thing. Stop that code from changing what you're trying to do. Um, pretty simple stuff. You guys can read through this. It's easy. Um, another thing that you'll see a lot of times is if you try to put forward slashes in, sometimes it will take them out. The reason for that is pretty self-explanatory. They don't want you to traverse directories. So one thing that you can do around here is you can change it by doing two. Oh, I guess you can make that bigger. So by doing two slashes, now you're saying, why does that make sense? And it's because it, it tells you right here. And the reason it's, it allows that, so you notice it's doing two of everything. So four total. And the reason it's allowing that is because of the fact that it's only gonna read these first sets and it, then it's gonna remove those first sets which leaves the second sets, okay? All right, so it says try out lab number five and try to read the Etsy password and bypass the filter. Okay, so did we ever get to, it says try five, but okay. So we'll try five. I don't think that's actually one of the answers because five was never, but what we'll do is we'll just do it real quick to see if it works. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Oh, whoops. We gotta do question mark file equals one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then Etsy password. All right, and look at that. We can read it right there because it's actually removing them. And I'll show you if we just did just the regular you'll see that we actually get an error you see that and it actually removed what it did is it removed and you can see here it removed all those directory traversals before it so all we have left is the Etsy password so that's where you can do that little neat trick so that's just something to keep in mind guys that's not something they're gonna ask you in here alright so now let's look at lab 3 it says give lab 3 a try to read the Etsy password what does the request look like? Okay, so again, this is just pretty easy. You just gotta use that trick they taught you. And we're just gonna say file, whoops, file equals, and we'll say one, two, three, four, Etsy password. Now with this one, you're gonna need the percent zero, zero. If you don't, 
you're not going to see it because it's going to get rid of it's going to add a PHP to it. So there it's asking us what it is. Perfect. Which function is causing the directory traversal in lab number four? Again, file get contents, and that's all written in the, up here. Um, so try out lab six. Let's see it. What is the directory that has to be in the input field? Okay, so this one, they actually show it to you right here. I don't. I wish they wouldn't have showed it to us right here because we can see it. But if we hit test, hit include, and it says right here, access denied, allowed files at THM profile folder only. So again, you just put um, THM profile before it, and you'll see it works just fine. And if you do this, you get the initial regular error. So you can just do THM profile and then your regular um, techniques and get through there. So I'm not going to show you guys how to or show you that one. It's pretty self-explanatory. They just have a specific profile that you have to run it under. Super simple. Um, but they give you the answer. They show it right there. It says example on how to do it. So there you go. All right, now it says try out lab number six and read the Etsy OS release. Okay, so we got to do the THM profile. We'll get rid of the test. We'll just do it over up here. And we'll just do file, THM profile. And there it is, the Etsy OS release. And you see at the top, we just went back directory four times, Etsy OS release, hit enter. And boom, there's the release version, 12.04. So again, we just looked at the release version on the backend server. Super simple, just had to run it in that profile for some reason. All right, so this is where it starts getting a little bit more complex, guys. Um, this is just explaining um, remote file inclusion, and they do a good example, or a good job of explaining it here. So you can see here, when he's sending the request, the get.php and then file equals, he's actually sending a website, okay? And that website is his, um, his file. So that's the difference. It's you're requesting it from a different server or a different site rather than yours. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you guys can read through all this. It's super good information. Um, I'm just trying to keep this somewhat short because we haven't even got to the challenges yet. Okay. So this is just remediation. This is how to prevent it if you're a security admin or something like that or how to fix it. All right. So this one, this is actually some good challenges. These actually took me a little bit of time because I, I thought they would be a little simpler only because of what they taught us in the above um, portion. I thought it was just going to be that, but it's not. They actually did some good stuff. All right. So they gave us a little clue here. It says find an entry point that could be via get, post, or cookie. So they did give us a little bit of a hint, which is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go... We got to go to the challenges, which is challenges, boom, and we'll go to challenge one. All right, so your the input form is broken. You need to send post requests with file perimeters. So first thing I would do, or I'm going to do here, is I'd turn on my burp suite because we know that we got to change it to a post right off the bat, right? Pull up burp suite. All right, and we're going to go to proxy, intercept is on, and we're going to reload this page. Okay, and you notice it's stuck now at, at intercept, perfect. Intercept is on, we're gonna send this to repeater. And now we have a fresh one to look at. So, first thing that I notice is we don't have any issues because we haven't changed the URL as far as that goes. So this is the actual one that we wanna change it to. This is channel one, okay? So we gotta add a couple of things. So, and I'm just gonna keep this up for you and then show you guys. But basically what this is going to do, the things that we need to add is certain information basically, right? So first thing, the refer, okay? So we need to ref use the refer. The website needs to be the whole thing, okay? And I know this looks complex to you guys, but it's not. It's not complex at all. This is just, the refer is just the regular website, right? Challenges child.1.php with the question mark and the file but the reason it's all it looks like gibberish is it's just URL encoded. So you can use something like CyberChef or something like that and, and URL encode your data. But it's pretty simple. Um, you can see it right there. And then all this is saying is the your four dot dot slashes. And then it's saying right here, ETC, Etsy. And then right here, flag one. So that's just URL encoding. That's all it is. 
So since we added that refer as the URL encoding, we need to change the content type to application forward slash X www form URL encoded. And that's just so it understands what it's looking at. Okay, and then here you notice the first thing we did was change this to a post. That's what they're looking for here is they really want you to know that it needs to be a post request, not a get request in order to see this information because it's the actual form was broken. So um, there you go. That should be all you need to add. Obviously, here's the file that you need to add. So that's the file that we're trying to get. And you can see when you run this correctly. So here's the, you guys can pause this at any point to see the differences. But here's this one. And then here's this one. Okay, and you can see I just add a few things. Now, when you go through here, it looks very similar. But the difference is, now it says file content preview of flag one. And there's our flag one, fixed input form, but it's all messed up. Okay, so now we're gonna go to flag two. So it says capture flag two at Etsy flag two. All right, so flag two, this one I like a lot. First things we're gonna do, turn off burp suite, go back home, go to challenge two, refresh the page it says. Okay, so first thing it says is welcome guests. Only admins can access this page. That would give me right away, the first thing I would think of is cookies. It knows that we're a guest. So let's go to cookie editor. Now you can do this with Burp Suite too. But you can see here it is. And it says the value is guests. So let's change this to admin. And there's multiple ways to change cookies, guys. So don't worry. But cookie editor is a great, easy way to do it for, that I like. So save it, refresh it, and boom, welcome admin. Okay, cool. So it looks like we have this, but we need to do something else. So now let's try and do PHP file equals choo -choo -choo -choo. whoops dot 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 and it was let's see flag two. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. My dog just got really annoyed with me, apparently. All right. So it looks like it's saying that failed to load, actually. But let's look at it here. So chal to PHP file equals do 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 do. Okay, it says include a file in the input. Okay, whatever. Make sure, yep, it's turned off. Okay, perfect. And make sure this says admin, perfect. Okay. Okay, so it looks like there might be a PHP function on this. So let's do the percent zero, zero. All right, so it actually didn't do that. Let's look at the hint here, because I said check your cookies. Oh, I think I know what it was. I think it's, I remember this. I'm sorry guys, I forgot about it. This is actually pretty cool. So what you do, we'll go back to this. So now that we know we can change our ad, or change our cookies to whatever we want to send it, uh, I like this box a lot. I just totally slipped my mind. Um, you actually can do this, interestingly enough. Because you're just sending it data and it's not validating what you're sending it. So it's just reading it. So we'll say Etsy flag two. So if I change it and save that as my flag or as my cookie, when I refresh, it actually runs that for me. And it says, welcome to do, 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 Etsy flag two. I'm not sure why it's not uh, showing it. Maybe I gotta do this real quick. And we may not even need to, uh, Let's see, where are we actually add on it? It's, it'll tell us here. I got it now. So get rid of that. And we'll go ahead and hit that percent zero zero and see if that does it. Because it looks like it's adding the PHP to it. And there it is. So it's adding the PHP. We had to get rid of that too. But you just change the cookie. There's cookies. Cookie is yummy. All right, perfect. So now we go to lab three. And I know this is a long video, guys. I'm trying to 
fly through this because you guys can slow it down, speed it up, pause it, all that stuff. So you guys have a lot of more to work with. Um, all right, so capture flag three at Etsy flag three. Okay, so this one um, was very similar to the, we'll do a test real quick to the first one. All right, so you can see here, first thing it's telling us is, all right, so first it's telling us that it automatically is adding that PHP. We can see that. And we can see the path that we need to get go back ways. So let's try just right off the bat, we'll try the, let's see, flag three, percent zero zero to try and get rid of that PHP. All right, and let's see what happened. Okay, so it actually didn't change, it didn't fix anything. It got rid of all of our dashes. So let's try doing this again. All right, let's see what that does. All right, and it looks like Build opening Etsy flag.php. So it looks like it's actually it actually was getting rid of them and not working for us. So let's do go back to our burp suite and we would we'll intercept it real quick. So let me drop that. We'll go ahead and go back here. Turn on burp. And we will just go. We'll just refresh this. Perfect. We'll go here. We'll go ahead and send this to repeater. And boom. So there's our cookie for this. So first thing I notice, or our sorry, this is our um, fly or our uh, session for this. The first thing I notice though is that there is this cookie, and that's from flag two. So we don't want that. That doesn't make any sense here. It doesn't even add up. So it saved that cookie. So that's first thing we need to get rid of. We know that. Um, the second thing is we are going to set this up pretty much exactly like that first one because we're going to we're kind of building upon if you notice we need to get that post request so we change that to a post i think this is it right here yep so here's the one that we're actually looking at now this one tricked me up for a minute because it didn't make sense to me why they added that cookie in there and i couldn't get it to work and i realized they kept that cookie in there for a reason it needs to be set to admin okay for you to see it so what we're doing here we change it to a post request we did the refer and the refer is just our regular website challenges chal3.php and then again application form url encoded what that's telling us is that it's a, it needs to go into a form pretty easy then there's the file boom and we had to add that percent zero zero because it is looking for a php file and it tells you that but you have to change this cookie to admin I remember that, and when you do that in Burp Suite and send it on, you'll see here you get content post is working. Perfect. All right, so last one, guys, and this one's a lot of fun. So last one is actually the playground. I think it was called playground. Uh, I've got Burp Suite still on. All right, so we'll go back to playground. And what it's asking us to do is get remote code execution. So first thing we're gonna do, and it says here, do, 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 do. all right, you need to run the host name command. Okay, easy enough. So first thing we're gonna do is, we know what remote code execution is, right? It's our our code or, being, or our file being taken from somewhere else. So I made this file here, and we'll see. So all it is is the print execute command host name, which is what they're telling us to do. We need to um, execute host name command. That's what we need to do to get the flag. So there's our execute host name in PHP. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually run this on a server. So this is running as a server, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's see if I still have my IP saved. Yep. Okay, so we'll go one, two, three, four, I think is the, and then there you go. And then there's our PHP hostname file. Okay, so it is being served right now. Perfect. So now what we need to do, whoops, 
is go to this playground.php and we're going to say let's start it file equals http and we're going to say I don't even know the command. Okay, there we go. There's our IP 161.112 and then there is the colon and now we're going to say php host name. So when this runs, it'll actually execute that host name command on the server because it's going to read it in PHP and that's what kind of file it is. So we open it. Boom, that's actually pulling from and we can show you here on here. It says right here serving on the port, it got a get request from the web server there, and there you go, it got that get request to PHP hostname from that IP, which is, if we look here, the actual web server IP. So it's got the request, everything's good, and then all now we have, right there, we have our flag. Now the cool thing is, because we know that you can do this remote code execution, we can actually just send it we know that we could get it to read any file we wanted. So we could get a backdoor and we could take over that box pretty easily because we have remote code execution. So keep that in mind guys. Let me know what you guys think of this video. I tried to keep it short. I got about 30, 32 minutes or something. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I know I went really fast because this one you could cover forever. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you like it and hopefully we can keep diving into these. I'm trying to get them knocked out. So thanks guys.